everybody, it's James Lindsay, and you're listening to New Discourse's Bullets, where I give a short bullet point type summary of a single topic out of woke Marxism so that we can understand it and stop it. We've got to be able to fight back. Today's episode is on a concept called thought terminating cliches, which I derive that terminology from Robert Lifton. Um, If you've been following the New Discourses podcast, you know I've read through quite a bit of and discussed quite frequently Robert Lifton's book from the early 1960s called Thought Reform and the Psychology of Totalism, a study of brainwashing in China, which I think is fairly essential reading for our present moment. And he has this concept he presents there called thought terminating cliches. You're very familiar with many of these. Check your privilege. That's transphobic. Trans women are women. You're very familiar with some of these. You're very familiar with some of these. The name of them tells you what they are. They are slogans or cliches, things that you can just say. You don't even have to think about them. You you hear a transphobia, you say trans women are women. That's transphobic. Check your privilege. You immediately just blurt out one of these cliches, these things. That's racist. Don't you think that's a little bit racist? These kinds of things, right? You just blurt these things out. And the idea is to terminate thought. It is to stop the person that you're talking to from thinking through their ideas and force them into a kind of emotionally dissonant state or even intellectually dissonant state where they're trying to work out what in the world you mean while you've hit them with something very loaded. And so here's how Lifton describes uh, in, in thought reform and the psychology of totalism, the, the thought terminating cliche. He says the language of totalist of the totalist environment, totalist environments, by the way, are ones in which there's one ideological line of thought that totalizes everything in society, how you think, how you write, how you act, how you're expected to behave, how the government is run, etc. You know, like inclusion or sustainability or equity. The language of the totalist environment is characterized by the thought terminating cliche. The most far reaching and complex of human problems are compressed into brief, highly reductive, definitive sounding phrases, easily memorized and easily expressed. Trans women are women. Check your privilege. See what I mean? These become the start and finish of any ideological analysis. You just want to say the N-word. We're teaching honest history. You don't want slavery taught. In thought reform, for, for instance, the phrase bourgeois mentality is used to encompass and critically dismiss ordinarily troublesome concerns like the quest for individual expression, the exploration of alternative ideas, and the search for prescriptive and perspective and balance in political judgments. That's racist. White supremacy culture. Transphobic. Internalized transphobia. Do you get the idea? Homophobic. Rising anti-LGBTQ hate. Do you feel it? Do you feel it? AAPI hate. Stop AAPI hate. Let me say that sentence again, though. In thought reform, for instance, that's the brainwashing process into ideological totalism. In thought reform, for instance, the phrase bourgeois mentality, which could be white supremacy culture instead, because it means the same thing, actually, is used to encompass and critically dismiss ordinarily troublesome concerns like the quest for individual expression, the exploration of alternative ideas, and the search for perspective and balance in political judgments. And in addition to their function as interpretive shortcuts, these cliches become what Richard Weaver has called, quote, ultimate terms, either God terms, representative of ultimate good, or devil terms, representative of ultimate evil. Trans women are women, God term. White supremacy culture, devil term. In thought reform, progress, progressive, liberation, proletarian standpoints in the dialectic of history fall into the former category. I think transformation, sustainability, inclusion, sustainable and inclusive future, these kinds of things would be easily added to this list at this point. So they fall into the former category of God terms, representative of ultimate good. And he goes on, 
capitalist, imperialist, exploiting classes and bourgeois, whether bourgeois mentality, liberalism, morality, superstition, greed, of course, fall into the latter. So you could easily say white supremacy culture, threat to our democracy, conspiracy theorist, all of these kinds of things are thought terminating cliches. That sounds very conspiratorial. Sounds conspiratorial. Conspiracy theorist, white supremacy culture, devil terms. The goal of these things is to shut down thought and all analysis at that spot, right? Totalist language, then, he explains, is repetitiously centered on all-encompassing jargon, prematurely abstract, highly categorical, relentlessly judging, and to anyone but its most devoted, devoted advocates, deadly dull. And Lionel Trilling's phrase, quote, the language of non-thought, which should put you in the mind of the kinds of things you would see in 1984 by George Orwell. Like, Big Brother is watching. Thought terminating cliche. To be sure, this kind of language exists to some degree within any cultural or organizational group, and all systems of belief depend upon it. It is in part an expression of unity and exclusiveness. As Edward Sapir put it, he talks like us, is equivalent to saying he is one of us. The loading is much more extreme in ideological totalism, however, since the jargon expressed, expresses the claimed certitudes of a sacred science. In this case, equity, sustainability, and inclusion. Also involved is an underlying assumption that language, like all other human products, can be owned and operated by the movement. Doesn't that resonate with you, with the woke movement being the movement in this case? No compunctions are felt about manipulating or loading it in any fashion, and the only consideration is its usefulness to a cause or to the cause, sorry. For an individual person, the effect of the language of ideological totalism can be summed up in one word, constriction. He is, so to speak, linguistically deprived. And since language is so central to all human experience, his capacities for thinking and feeling are immensely narrowed. This is what is meant when one of the characters he interviewed, sorry, I'm messing this up because the context isn't clear. This is what who meant when he said, quote, using the same pattern of words for so long, you feel chained, end quote. That's one of the, the uh, Chinese brainwash victims that he ended up interviewing to write this book. Who? I forgot his first name. Actually, not everyone exposed feels chained, but in effect, everyone is profoundly confined by these verbal fetters. As in other aspects of totalism, this loading may provide an initial sense of insight and security. Check your privilege. Oh, I never thought about how I'm privileged. I, that's very insightful. And I feel a little safer knowing that in safety, our democracy, protecting our democracy. That's one, isn't it? Bad for our democracy. I feel more secure. I feel safe. This is an unsafe place. We need a safer school. We need safe spaces. An initial sense of insight and security, eventually followed by uneasiness. This uneasiness may result in a retreat into a rigid orthodoxy in which an individual shouts the ideological jargon all the louder in order to demonize, or sorry, in order to demonstrate his conformity, hide his own dilemma and his despair, and protect himself from the fear and guilt he would feel should he attempt to use words and phrases other than the correct ones. Or else he may adopt a complex pattern of inner division and dutifully produce the expected cliches and public performances while in his private moments he searches for more meaningful avenues of expression. Either way, his imagination becomes increasingly dissociated from his actual life experiences and may even tend to atrophy from disuse. So that's his description of thought terminating cliches. I gave a wide variety of thought terminating cliches that you've probably encountered or experienced. White fragility. You're exhibiting white fragility. That's one. There are so many that were now almost completely uh, numb to them. But what you need to understand is that these are linguistic weapons that have been deployed against you. These are tools designed to stop you from analyzing what's in front of you, understanding the world around you, to either associate you with some evil, with the so-called devil terms, or to get you to view the woke perspective as supremely sacred and holy you know, with the so-called God terms, our democracy, defending our democracy. That's 
just on the tip of my tongue right now. Um, we're very familiar with this experience, but it's good to be able to name it and understand what it is. They're called thought terminating cliches. They are a tool of cult mind control. You have to be able to identify them and you have to be able to refuse them. I would say, what are your pronouns? That's probably not exactly one because it's a question, but the recitation of the pronouns probably is. So you have to be able to identify these and then refuse to participate in the trap that they set up for you. You have to maintain your analytical faculties. You have to be able to perceive reality and not be put off by these. Whether that requires escaping through argumentation, debate, or just sheer wit, cleverness, and humor often work. Um, whether you escape by refusing to participate entirely and just going away, uh, that's up to you. There are, are various strategies you might employ, but you need to understand that these thought terminating cliches do not mean what they sound like they mean. They may not mean much of anything at all, as a matter of fact. They may be signals or virtue signals to others in tribe or to point out somebody who is bad. Well, that sounds very conspiratorial. The goal is to get you to stop thinking, stop asking questions, and stop analyzing. So learn to recognize thought terminating cliches and start strategizing to avoid the game that they put you into so that you don't play that game, which you are always eventually going to lose. <laughs>